Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julia McNeil Crafts. So today I thought we would do a little cacti painting. Um, I'm just in the mood for having a little play. Um, so yeah, I thought why not. So today I am using my Arteza gouache paints again. So I've got Cerulean Blue, um, Viridian Green, Lime Green, um, Bumblebee Yellow, Peach Red, which is my favourite favourite, and um, Pearl Bubblegum. So, and I've, I'm still using this sort of makeshift, <laughs> makeshift palette because I couldn't um, find any um, palette when I first started playing, but actually it works quite well. Yeah, so I just fancied, I've done a lot of sort of galaxies and skies and I really fancied doing something a little bit different. Um, so I thought, why not try a cacti? Because actually they are hugely popular at the minute, aren't they? Um, it seems to be like a lot of the crafting stuff that you buy at the minute um, seems to contain a lot of um, cacti. It seems a popular um, a popular subject matter. So I thought, let's try painting our own. I don't think it will be that difficult. <laughs> so we will find out. Okay, so I did my sketch with just a little green, pale green Prisma um, colour pencil and um, just because it is much easier um, to hide the, your sketch lines using a coloured pencil than it is um, if you use a HB sort of leaded, leaded pencil. So what I am going to do is I am going to put some of the darker green in what would be the shadow areas. So this would be down at the, the ground level here and then I've got, you can't quite see it yet, but I've got a second part of the cactus there. So just where those bits joined there is going to be a darker area. Now my favourite way of making greens is to take, rather than use a green from the palette, is I like to take um, like a turquoise blue and a bit of yellow and let it sort of merge in the middle. Now they didn't have a strong turquoise in this particular um, kit, so I'm, as I said I'm working with my Arteza gouache. Um, so yeah, but that's okay because I mean there's more than enough colours. Um, so the cerulean blue is very turquoisey, so that's quite good. So I'm kind of just using the same sort of techniques that we have been using so far in all the other paintings that we've done. I'm just going to keep it very, very loose. As I said, I'm going to, I'm starting with the darker colours and um, where the shadow areas would be. And then sort of, I'm going to bring in some of the lighter um, greens and then sort of finish off with the yellow. But I'm just making sure that I use plenty of water and just let it do its own thing. Water colouring is really not difficult. I really would encourage you to give it a try. Believe me, I am not an expert. I know I draw my quirky cat. Honestly, I didn't think I could draw until just over a year ago. I just thought, yeah, other people do that. Other people make stamps and images. I, I can colour okay, but, you know, I can't actually do it for myself. Um, and it took, there was like somebody within the crafting industry asked me if I could draw and I was like, well not really but I'll show you some of my sketches and then she suggested um, sort of turning them into stamps and that gave me such a confidence boost and, and I've just kept playing um, so it's not been afraid and as I said watercolour you can see that that has bled over now because I have added that water the paint will only go where the water is it's a very very forgiving um, surface and if you don't like it you can also just pick it back pick it back up so again I'm just going to take some of those dark colours and I'm just literally dotting it into the water and then letting letting the water do the work. I'm not overworking it, I'm not telling it where it to go, where it should go, just literally dotting it in and as I said letting letting um, the water do the work. And uh, yeah, 
just going to, I don't know if there's much more for me to say about this. So as I said, what I'm doing is I'm using a wet on wet technique. So the um, water is going down first and then I am just letting the um, paints bleed into the water and bleed into each other. So I'm not quite sure there's much more to say on the matter for this. So what I'm going to do is just pause you just now and then pop you on fast forward. And then I'll, I'll maybe come back when we've got something else to talk about. <laughs> Okay, so this is the first time I've painted a cacti before, so I'm just playing. But I was just noticing that I've got quite a lot of yellow bits there, but now I've got a tiny tip of the blue, and because it's wet on wet, if I just put a little dot into that yellow, it sort of spores out. But obviously cacti are quite spiky. <laughs> um, so I was thinking that really mimics the effect of those spores really well. So that's quite a good little thing that I've sort of happily discovered by accident is just as I said dotting colours in amongst each other. The other really cool thing is yellow. Yellow seems to be a magic colour. With darker colours there, it, uh, yellow just seems to push it away for some reason. No other colour does that. It is so cool. Um, but for this um, thing it's quite good because as I said we're creating those sort of spiky, spiky pores. Now I've got a wee bit too much uh, spores. pores. I've got a wee bit too much water travelling down there, but that's fine. So I'm just going to take it back. So as I said, this wet on wet, and then I'm just adding little dots of the various colours that contrast onto each other just to kind of create those, the spiky feel. As I said, I, don't, I really don't think there's, I'm sure absolutely anybody can do this. It's just three very strange circles because they're not... You know, anyone can draw that. It's a it's a dodgy circle. I think we can all manage a dodgy circle. It's real circles we have difficulty with. <laughs> so that's just like three ovals piled on top of each other. A bit of water in the middle, dark from the edges, and letting it bleed into the center with a lighter patch in the middle. It's that you always want a um, shadow, which is these bits here, your mid tone. And your highlight that is what will make something work so we've got all of that with that so what I'm going to do now is just leave that dry and then we'll maybe add a few little pink flowers and some little doodles just to finish that off force dried that a little bit with my heat gun because I'm desperate to get on with it and uh, yeah it's quite late so I should really be in bed now I've used a wet on wet technique there now I am going to work um, dry because so I've I've wet my brush um, but I have not wet the paper and that's because I don't really want that bleeding effect this time I just want to add I'm still going to get a bit of movement I'm still going to pick up the um, the paint from underneath that's sort of unavoidable um, but I'm just wanting to create a few little um, pink flowers just to contrast against that um, that um, the blue and the green and as I said I don't I want these fairly structured um, so I'm not particularly wanting them to um, move about sorry so I think most of the painting I've done on on my channel so so far the majority of it does tend to be the wet on wet technique I just do absolutely love the movement um, that that causes but this is an example of um, where it's better to not have your page absolutely soaking wet. So I'm just going to build that up. It's going to take a few few layers and I want to build up, up the tones. I love that pink. I think I may have said that in every uh, video I've done <laughs> about these Arteza gouache paints. I think they're amazing. So uh, again, I'm not doing anything overly complicated. Um, this is literally just four or five little bumps. It's one of those sort of doodle flowers that we all draw. You know when somebody's uh, talking to you on the phone and 
Yeah, just end up doodling on a pad. We can all do flowers like this. My daughter can do flowers like this. It's just, we're just giving the impression of one. So that's that um, bright pink. I still have a bit of um, a darker, actually, let's, I'm going to put in a little bit of burnt umber. I think this is left over from my last project and I'm just going to put a little bit of that in the centre. That looks really scarily dark at the minute, but that's okay. We will blend it out. So I'm just putting a little bit of dark in like that. Because we're again we're looking for that um shadow, mid-tone and highlight. That is what will make something look more realistic and less flat. If we're painting and we don't have that, as I said that's that's where it doesn't um it feels so you don't have oh my goodness my words are shocking. You don't have to feel that you need to be an amazing artist and portray something accurately. You don't. Um, you just need to have a basic understanding. I'm not even thinking about light source in this. That's a whole other subject. But just even having the different tonal values within something gives that extra depth, that extra definition and just makes a difference. It's what can kind of make a, a quick beginner's painting look really good. So again I'm just going to dry that because I want to build up the colours on it a little bit um, but it's too wet, it's all merging together at the minute. Okay so I'm just going to go over that again with that bright pink to get, oops, to get a little that sort of blended together just a little bit. Not too much, because um, I said I don't want to lose that darkness. But we'll just kind of um, have it so that the blending works a little bit and better. And then I am going to grab some of this pearlized bubblegum, which is a lovely pearlized pink. And what we will do is just add some of that lighter colour into some areas which is then going to give us that highlight I was talking about and the fact then that we've got those different tones and especially with the fact that that's a pearlized paint it's really going to catch catch the light a bit more and that's where we will get as I said those multiple tones with. Now it still look, doesn't look much at the minute but we are just going to be able to fix that so easily. I'm going to grab my pen that I love to use for doodling and now I'm just going to draw round those cacti shapes. So I'm just going to do a few squiggly lines. So obviously my channel is predominantly a craft channel as opposed to an art channel. Um, so for me I'm kind of, this is a lovely outlet but I'm also kind of I would be looking at what to do with this that's so not that I'm intending on putting this in an art gallery or anything but this could be a page on one of your art journals you could turn it into a card you could use it in your junk journals so lots of different things so all I've done here is just put a really sketchy outline I've done a few lines really sketchy okay and just to and this is where we're kind of going to um, increase the looks of all of those spores. So I've done that. Now I'm just going to do a few sort of squiggly lines around some of those borders. So the same way when I am edging a card, this is the same technique, but instead of kind of going around in a square, I've just sort of gone around the edge of the cacti like that. Now I'm also just going to put a few of those sort of random squiggles in the centre of those bits there. This is not difficult, this is genuinely just, I am just squiggling. There is absolutely nothing artistic about this. Anybody could do this painting. Right, I'm just going to check that those flowers are dry and what we'll do is just doodle around those. Okay, so again, this is where we will bring this to life and the fact that our painting underneath is not the most amazing fine art we've ever seen. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to sketch around those petals like so, just so that we've got a bit of a, a contrast. I'm going to do a bit of a swirl in the centre of it as well because um, that sort of indicates the sort of centre of a flower. So this is, I am literally scribbling around here. I am not doing anything that 
the rest of you can't do. I am by no means a watercolour artist or any sort of fine artist. I am just doodling. So that's it with the black. I am also just going to add some of those same sort of squiggle features um, in there but with white because so that's going to add to that um, contrast and again I always find that both having both black and white doodles seems to really help. I can tell I've been overheating my um, thing, it's quite bumpy. I don't know why I bothered taping it down. Um, that's because I'm in a rush, but yeah, it's fine um, because I'll just stick it under a pile of books. Maybe we should. And so now all I'm doing is sort of scribbling around those flowers in white, and now all of a sudden we have something that looks sort of really arty. <laughs> now, it's amazing just the difference that a few doodles can make. So I am really liking how that is looking. I'm thinking that maybe we'll just create a tiny bit of background. So I'm just going to put, so I don't want the water sort of touching the cacti because it's going to end up bleeding onto it and it'll all sort of merge. So I don't want that. And what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this, I think it's violet, that's from the last project I was working on. I'm going to put a little bit down in these corners here. And just around the edges and then I'm going to pull that out into the um this peach red pink that is my favorite pink in the world <laughs> i'm just gonna put some of that and we'll just kind of create a very sort of washy background for the cacti to sit in i'm gonna pull as i said i'm gonna pull that out I don't want it to go across the whole thing, but I'm just going to sort of pull it out a little bit now with water so it sort of gradually goes into a softened, a softened line. So we're just giving it something to sort of stand out. It's amazing doing this sort of thing to your painting as well. Um, it just kind of gives it that sort of really arty look. And all I've done is slapped a bit of water around about it. And then as I said, I've made sure that I've not got my water line touching the, cac the the line with the cactus because obviously that would sort of bleed into it. While it's wet I'm going to do that sort of dotting technique and um, get a bit more colour and movement, get it sort of bleeding out and blending. Okay and then we would let that dry again. As I said normally I would let all these stages sort of dry naturally but um, it's late at night and I really want to finish the picture and yeah, I can't be bothered waiting until tomorrow, but it's fine. It'll all be fine. Okay, so one of the final things I'm going to do just to finish this quick little watercolour off is some splashes. And I think you find this is, seems to be such a popular technique, like even you know when you go into these fine art galleries and there's lots of amazing artists that I watch here on YouTube as well splatters are huge <laughs> they are huge in the art world they are huge in the crafting community so yeah a few splatters and it again it just sort of adds to that real arty arty look so I've, I've kind of gone with the pink as the contrast um, I might put a few green in, green in as well so I've gone with that bubblegum pink and now I'm um, sorry, the peach red, and now I'm going in with the bubblegum pink, and I might just put some um, of that lime green one in as well. I tend to find if I need kind of quite a wet brush for this. If I just tap my brush like that, I get sort of bigger splatters, which is why you tend to see me doing both. So that gives me like a lot thicker splatters and then if I do that it seems to be a lot finer. The other useful thing to do when you're doing flowers is well, splatters is to sort of turn your work as well or your angle of your paintbrush so that all the splatters aren't going in the one direction because that can just look a bit strange too. So yeah, so now I've just added a few extra splatters. As I said, uh, I don't know why I bothered taping this down because I've ended up overheating it so much that it's sort of lifted off anyway. Um, but it's fine, you can still straighten stuff like that. Obviously to do that is to sort of prevent the warping of the card. But um, put this under a pile of books and it'll be absolutely fine. So um, 
because I've heated it so much that's why it's not overly protected it um, for creating the frame there. So just pull pull that off, that sort of rips slightly so I'll go this direction. If you do find it, I don't have one on me, but if you do find if you rub it down the back of a spoon so you can push the fibres, sorry, you can push the fibres back in if it tears slightly. Um, I'm just doing it with the back of my nail there, but a spoon is really effective for doing that. Well, I have never ever painted a cacti before in my life and it was just, I was kind of sort of looking at pictures of them in craft kits thinking, you know, they don't, they're just little ovals. They don't look that difficult. I'm just going to try. So I have learnt with you. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope that whether you're into watercolour or you're a crafter and you're scared of doing a painting, that you might just try something like this because honestly, three circles and a little bit of paint splatter, well, they're not even circles, they're kind of weirdly shaped circles, but I think that looks really artistic. Um, so anyway, thank you for spending some time with me today. Um, if you have enjoyed it here, please do consider liking and subscribing and I will be back again very soon. Okay, take care then and goodbye.